Hello everybody and welcome back to Be Combined. And where we left off in the previous episode, of course, the ice has captured us once again. Which means we gotta choose a different path this time to try to figure out um, how we're gonna escape this situation. Now, if I keep on going through uh, the uh, previous situations, you guys can see that we could go with a tickle option over here. A flight option over here. And lastly, we have Sly and Chill for this one. So you know what? Let me try to go for a tickle option over here. Alright, back, took a deep breath, and thought, well, time to bust out the tickles. There we go. Let's well, see how this goes. Time to bust out the tickles. <laughs> However, that's gonna work. Hey, Tish, wanna come see something? Yep. Hmm. Check it. Beck lunged forward and began to tickle under Tish's arms. <laughs> Is that gonna work out one day? It is! <laughs> what the? Tish, is she uh, tickling you? Yep. <laughs> Tears began to form in Tish's eyes as she gasped for breath between gales of laughter. Beck redoubled her efforts until Tish finally had had enough. Ah, <laughs> oh, there we go. She ran away. What just happened? Well, she seems nice. Sorry for the interruption. I think you were just threatening us? Iggy's eyes darted around, <laughs> a realization dawning on his face that he was now outnumbered. Exactly. Now he's all alone. I just remembered I have somewhere to be. <laughs> See you around, new kid. Iggy kicked at the puddle before making his escape. Oh, no. I think he just splashed. <gasps> Whoa. What a little creep. Uh... Beck, I think you got a little bit of ooze in your Beck hair. Beck shook the ooze out of her hair as best as she could. Wow, is it bad? It depends. What are your feelings about having a more mature, refined look? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> wow, seriously? Chapter 4. Man, that the puddle is policy. very creepy. Luca paused for a moment, catching his breath. He'd only just met Beck. And somehow he already managed to drag her into this mess. Hopefully he could make it up to her. But finding Rolo was his primary concern. Alright, so apparently all we gotta do next is just focus on finding Rollo. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is where Rollo was uh, missing still, right? Property of Valentine, Fertilizer Company. Looks old. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't really look like we can um, do much here, to be honest. Of course, we have the puddle, right? And that is kind of about it. So let's get out of here. Oh! Look out! What the hell are you doing out here? And why did a kid with gray hair just run past us in Roxy panic? Roxy and Fitz looked drained. It was clear they'd spent all day searching. Uh, that's Beck? I don't care who she is. What happens? We're just helping look for Rollo. Luca, I need you to start telling me the Roxy's truth. Roxy's temper could often be dismissed as the impatience of an older sibling. But this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Her eyes were wild and unfocused, looking straight through Luca. We're running out of In time. In a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. Rolly and I weren't just playing in Whip Wood yesterday. We were investigating lights at the old Valentine warehouse, but someone was there in a strange suit, and we hid in the dumpster and had a heavy bag dropped on us. And I think it was... I think it was a body. And so we ran, but we got split up. And I ran home. And it's all my fault. And now, my best friend may never come back. Whoa. Just... Whoa. Roxy, <laughs> still exhausted and angry, softened briefly as her eyes hunted the ground in thought. With a determined hmm. sigh, she looked up at Luca. It's not your fault, Luca. Roll is gonna be okay. Roxy I promise. Roxy drew herself up. I'm gonna fix this. Luca, go home. But I wanna help. This is too dangerous for our kids. I can't just sit around. I have to do something. Roxy tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. Hmm. Well, you go back to that little tree house you two like to play in. Wait there in case Rollo shows up. Sounds like Luca a plan? wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. Alright, you did the right thing telling me the truth. Now, scoot. Oh, man, what is she gonna do? You really believe this story? What other options do we have? Things have been strange around here, leading up to the festival. 
Yeah, well, my dad has been acting weird lately too. Well, weirder than Looking normal. Into the puddle, Roxy rubbed her arms to warm up. Why is it so cold here? Yeah, this place gives me the willies. All right, wait at the treehouse in case Rollo shows up. Um, all right. Um, what is this guy doing? <laughs> Joey, have you seen Rollo around? No, sorry, Luca. I've had my eyes in the dirt looking for beetles. I can't seem to find any. Hmm. Well, he never came home last night. You think it's because it's been colder than normal? Yeah, I don't see why that would have anything to do with Rollo. No, the beetles. Do you think the temperature confuses their uh, circadian uh, rhythm or something? So, who's to say? I'm no beetologist. Just keep an eye out for him, would ya? Of course. Mr. Nuncree oh. jumped with a start. Whoa, don't sneak up on an old fellow like that. Oh, sorry. Uh, who are you talking to? What? Luca motioned to the phone booth. Oh, no, um, I was just checking because I thought tonight I heard it ring. But that damn thing never does, of course. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen anyone use it, really. The whole thing's a waste of money, if you ask me. Any word from Rollo yet? Not yet. Well, long time for a boy to lose his way. Rollo knows those woods too well to get lost. Well, I suppose you're right. City boys' antics have this whole town worried sick. Antics? Yeah, well, we all know Rollo likes to play his uh, little pranks. You think this is a prank? What other possible explanations could there be? He's not playing a prank and he didn't get lost. Someone took him. I know it. Hmm. How'd you know that? Unless... Luca, is there something else uh, you sh I should know? Mr. Nuncree gently placed one of his substantial hands on Luca's shoulder. Hmm. Thank you, boy. If there is something you know, something that could help your friend, you need to tell folks. Luca peered up at Mr. Nuncreed. Kind eyes warmed a stern face. Oh man, the music is a getting a little bit uh hiding beneath it all. It was subtle, scary. but Luca could sense something eating away at him. Hmm. There was a uh lurking behind those eyes. Oh, there was a shame lurking behind those eyes. There was a shame lurking behind those eyes. A deep sadness. If Mr. Nuncreed was that worried about Rollo, maybe he could help. Hmm. Yesterday, Rollo and I were messing around at the old Valentine's Mr. warehouse. Mr. Nuncreed raised an eyebrow. <laughs> Both of you? You were with Rollo when he went missing? Not exactly. I was hiding in the dumpster. The dumpster? Hmm. What were you doing in there? At first, we were just looking around. Then someone in a strange yellow suit came and dumped something on us. We both got scared and ran. That was the last time I saw him. Hmm. You got scared by some garbage? Well, that's why you don't go skulking in someone's dumpster. But it wasn't garbage, I think. I, I think it was a body. I'm sure it was just some trash. No, there was a name tag. It said Deep Engineering. Mr. Nuncreed's shoulders slumped. Hmm, I wish you wouldn't have said that. A deep sigh bellowed from oh his God. chest. Oh God, is this guy behind it? Why did you have to... <sighs> I tried, Luca. God knows I tried to keep you Luca safe. Luca attempted to take a step back, but Nuncreed's hand clamped down on his shoulder. What? But you, Van Horns, just can't help yourselves, can you? We were all so close, so close to being done with, with this. With a firm shove, Nuncreed manhandled Luca into the phone booth. Wow. What are you doing? It's out of my hands now, boy. The door now, latched boy. shut with a mechanical hiss. What? Are you kidding me? Did we just get caught again? As Luca pounded the glass, <laughs> the floor Gosh, dropped dang it. from under his feet. The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule plummeting at gravity's whim. Luca winced what? and pressed his hands to the walls. As he braced for impact, the capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth stop. Huh. He felt a cold rush of air and opened his eyes with hesitance. Two large figures in hazmat suits occluded his view. Luca heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncreed over an intercom. He knows too much. The end. Wow, come on, seriously? Wait. Oh, yeah, we gotta go with no. a different... Wait, what? This isn't the end. I know there's still much more. 
Somehow this went wrong. Okay, let's try something else. All right, so as I was saying, we got to go with a different option. Apparently, uh, we cannot really do anything here. I think what I got to do is instead of shame, we're going to have to have a different option to use here in order to progress. But for now, what we can do is just blind. So let's just try this one out. All right, Lucas drew himself up and decided to take the only option that he had left, which is flight. Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. Flight. All right, he let's squinted down the barrel of the mission control defense cannon, aiming it through an opening in the dense tree branches. Huh. So are we just going to run away? Oh yeah, I think we he are. He looked up with surprise as it struck true and taut. Whoa, I can't believe that worked. Hey, Mr. Kier, we'd love to hear your thoughts. But I'm afraid we have places to be. Come on, Iggy. See ya, jerks. <laughs> there we go. Ah, fine. We know where that leads them. This way, we'll take the tunnels. Luca Man, everything is just so weird in this they game. sprinted through the thicket. The branches clawed at them, reluctant to give passage. After what felt like a marathon, Luca stopped in his tracks as they reached the clearing. What the? That was all he was able to say before Iggy slammed into his back. The boys what? tumbled down a steep decline and crashed with a wheezing thud on a surface as hard as ice. In fact, it was ice. What? What is happening? Chapter five. Awesome. Apparently Signs. we're going to explore a brand they new location stood here. They silently, catching their breath. The sky was like sapphire. With each breath, a plume of steam escaped from Luca's lungs. Let's keep moving. Luca pulled Iggy to his feet as they gazed across a snowy terrain. Wow, look at this place. That was actually pretty badass. <laughs> uh huh. I think we lost them. Are we up in the mountains? I don't think so. If anything, we went downhill. Then what's up with the winter wonderlands? <laughs> All I know is there's no going back the way we came back, the way we came. Let's see if we can get out of the bearings. Follow me. Alright, we gotta find a way back home. Man, why is this place snowy though? A disc of smooth metal was lightly covered in snow. Two huh. faint seams were visible along the surface. A manhole cover? Hmm, if it is, I've never seen one like it. It also looks like they're, uh, these are like uh, tire tracks, maybe? I don't even know. Luca! Look, are you there? had almost forgotten the walkie-talkie he was carrying. Uh, it's that bozo cur. I hope nothing bad has happened to you out in the Luca woods. Luca looked at Iggy with hesitation. No need to with be rude. With a resigned sigh, Luca responded. It seems like the only dangerous thing in the woods is you. He speaks. Well, the young man of the hour. Now how in tarnation did you end up with one of our radios? Just lucky, I guess. Boy, howdy, you Van Horns are full of surprises, aren't ya? You knew my parents? I never had the honor of meeting your father, but your mom sure was a handful. Luca winced, shoving the walkie-talkie back into his pocket. Hmm, we gotta keep moving. Alright, let's keep her going then. Let's see what we can find. Um, am I supposed to go through here? I'm kinda lost. Yeah, I cannot really go anywhere. What the heck? Hmm. Can I go down here? Yes, we can. Oh god, these two. What's the readout? Hmm. Sitting just above 258 Kelvin. That's down a bit from last time. Should we report this to Mr. Kerr? Meh. Still within safe ranges. It may be spreading, but it's under control for now. Even a small nudge in the equilibrium could cause a cascade. Dude, relax. Just a few more sides to hit before we can punch out. Let's get this over with. I mean, is this the Beacon Pine sign? What the heck? What's all this? Hmm, hard to say with all this snow. Yeah, I think it's a town sign. I can almost make out the letters out of there. Hmm, what town could this be? There couldn't be another town this deep into the deep woods, right? Hmm, I'm looking at the evidence to the contrary. Let's figure out what we're dealing with here. Step one. Snow's gotta go. Yeah, well, I'll see what I can do. Wait, how do I... Am I supposed to just kick the uh, snow out of this thing? Hmm, not sure. 
In situations such as these, I find it best to just chuck stuff first and ask questions second. <laughs> yeah, but I have nothing to chuck at it. Oh, never mind. Okay, okay, hold up. There we go. So it is become pines. What? Stared in disbelief at the sign that now clearly read, "Welcome to Beacon Pines." What? This doesn't make any sense. Yeah, well, we're in Beacon Pines. How's that possible? We ran away from town. How did we just get back here? Hmm. I guess we got turned around. Where did all this snow come from? Well, it's been colder than normally lately. Yeah, well, there's a pretty big difference between a sweater weather and a, this Arctic uh, hellscape. The puddle we found at the before, it was cold too. Maybe all of it leads to one source? Yeah, you, you think it's related? What the hell is going on? <sighs> We're gonna get you some answers. Let's just keep moving. Man, this is just so weird. Oh, it is becombined all under snow. Hmm, this stuff looks familiar to you. Well, it looks like the stuff near the puddle I, uh, you shove me into? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. The fencing listened, each chain link encapsulated with a translucent layer of ice. Hmm, looks like the stuff they put up around deep woods. Yeah, the stuff who put up? I don't know. <laughs> it's Looking all frozen. Down at the frozen stream, Luca could faintly see a school of minnows encased in the ice. Wow, whatever happened here, it happened fast. The fish didn't even have time to run. Or, you know, swim, run. <laughs> so apparently the ice happened, the of but it didn't affect us. Luca went hush. He looked back to see Iggy's face twisted with confusion. Everything's gone. What? There's nothing here but more snow. There must be an explanation for all this. We have to keep looking. You can look all you want. I quit. Iggy, we have to keep going. You don't get it, do you? This isn't one of your pathetic Hank Atomic stories. We aren't going to save the day. We aren't even going to save ourselves. My face is mangled. The town is destroyed. And everyone we've ever known is gone. We don't know that. You can't just quit. Well, do whatever you want. I'm done. <sighs> Iggy, it's gonna be okay. Luke Seriously, Iggy, come on. At the darkening sky, he let out a long, foggy breath. Faintly, Iggy began to cry. Oh, Seeing man. Iggy in such a pathetic state gave Luca a sense of compassion and more than a little guilt. It is getting pretty late, I think. Probably not a great idea to stumble around in the dark anyway. Luca allowed himself to collapse next to Iggy. Let's just rest for the a bit. The boys huddled together for warmth and comfort. If not for exhaustion, their minds would be racing, trying to make sense of the events of the day. As it was, all they had energy for was to sit in silence, numb. Wow, seriously. Man, this game is uh, really, really well done. I absolutely love this. Hmm. The way the snow covered everything over, it's kind of calming. Yeah? Uh, I haven't time to say yet, but thanks. Huh? For getting us away from those creeps. I sort of froze up back there. Iggy, I should be the one apologizing. This all happened because I lost my temper. Nah, that's bull hockey. First of all, you didn't know what that gunk would do. You didn't, right? <laughs> of course not. And second, stop with this baloney about losing your temper. But I did lose Iggy my temper. Iggy motioned sarcastically to his half-deformed face. Obviously. But that's exactly what you should have done. Huh? I was being a horse ass. You were supposed to be a horse ass in response. That's how it works. Iggy, I'm having a hard time following. You wanted me to fight you? Of course. <laughs> Jeez, you goody goody types take forever to understand this basic point. Why would you go around saying cruel things trying to get into Iggy a fight? Shrugged. Hmm. Well, it's something to do. You're an asshole because you're bored? Sometimes I just feel empty. You would understand. You and Rollo are always having a blast together. Laughing and calling that dinky little treehouse mission Iggy control. Now wept openly. Perfect little Luca Van Horn, with his perfect little life. 
<sighs> My life is not perfect. Everybody in town likes you. Not everybody. Hell, that new girl hasn't even unpacked yet, and even she already likes you. Well, you have Tish. He his nose with a sleeve. I love Tish. Tish is great. But she ain't exactly world's greatest conversationalist, you know. Luca gave a warm chuckle. <laughs> I get an impression. He cleared his throat as he wiped his eyes. Huh? Mm, it must be raining out here. Iggy Definitely. arched into a wide yawn. We should probably try to get some sleep. Yeah. Let's lay low for now. Tomorrow, we'll get to the bottom of all Luca's this. Luca's eyelids began to slowly drift shut. Luca? Yeah? I always did want to see the inside of your dinky little treehouse. <laughs> what do you think? Not bad. Hmm. I'll give you the full tour when we get back. You know what? Huh? That's all Luca could whisper before succumbing to sleep. Oh, God. He snuggled in some more. When it comes to worst days of my entire life, this one wasn't half bad. I have a bad feeling about this, though. Maybe we're not going to even wake up anymore. Of warm bread. Luca was playing with toy blocks on the living room rug. He looked up to see his parents on the couch. His mother held his father's head in her lap. She idly stroked his hair while humming a song. A voice behind Luca spoke. This is how you remember them, huh? Luca turned to see his own face. The doppelganger from his dreams. Still clad in a yellow hazmat suit. Still carrying a look of disdain behind empty eyes. Aww. Look at this perfectly cozy scene. You know it wasn't really like this. The figure picked up a toy block and inspected it. It's amazing the facades that one can build given the right materials. Not that I blame us. These are a child's memories, all warm and fuzzy. You don't remember, do you? Luca snatched the block from the figure's yellow gloved hand. Remember what? The doppelganger pointed to the couch. The last day we saw him alive. The day he chose to abandon us. Luca turned to look at his father, still lounging on the couch. That's not true. He didn't abandon us. The doppelganger waved his hand dismissively. Everything is true here. It's just a matter of what we choose to see. Let me show you. The world flickered and pulsed. Luca was sitting next to his bed, listening to his heartbeat with one of his dad's stethoscopes. The doppelganger limped into the room. Now, now, we both know that's not how this went. He grabbed Luca's hand and guided the stethoscope to the floor. Luca heard muffled shouting, brought close by the stethoscope. It was his parents, fighting. Do you remember what we did next? Luca gave a slow nod and crept down the hall to peek through the banister. He could see the outline of his mother at the bottom of the stairs. Damn it, Walt, we can't afford to get involved in this. She was scared. His father stepped forward. What am I supposed to do, just watch? There's a sickness in this town and we both know who's behind it. I swore an oath to help people. I won't turn my back on them. Luca's mother grabbed Walt. She was crying, pleading. I can't lose you. Walt calmly removed Eleanor's hand from his shoulder. What's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong. I could never live with myself if I let Sharper get away with this. Eleanor raised her voice. Spare me your bullshit platitudes. What about our son? Luca flinched, dropping the stethoscope down the stairs. Walt turned with a panicked smile. Luca, is that you, buddy? With tears in his eyes, Luca descended the stairs. Mom? Dad? What's going on? Walt dropped to a knee to meet Luca eye to eye. Nothing, buckaroo. Your mom and I just got a little overexcited is all. Luca placed the stethoscope against his father's chest. His heart was racing. It sounded like you were going somewhere. Walt gently removed the device from Luca's ears. Listen to me, Luca. I have some business to take care of. I'll be back in time to tuck you in. Luca hugged his father tightly. Promise? Walt stood up and walked to the door. He glanced over his shoulder. I promise. With a wink and a grin, he put on his hat and strode out into the evening sun. Man, that was just so good. A figure approached soundlessly from the foggy snowfall. I love it that we're getting a little bit of lore here. It stood with above every them, single scene that we chosen. Lingering in contemplation, slowly raising one hand one? above Iggy 
it snapped out two brisk raps on his head. Huh. From a deep slumber, <laughs> Iggy sprang up defensively. Ah, huh, get your hands Whether on me! Whether it was the calming presence <laughs> or the recognition that he was not in danger. This one kind of looks like a mouse. Iggy felt his clenched fists lower. Huh, just what have you been Luca doing? looked up, gradually remembering his whereabouts. The figure exhaled a cloud of warm vapor. You just certainly have caused a lot of commotion. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Take it easy, Iggy. You are asleep minding our own business. You're the one running around knocking on people's heads. <laughs> I'm sorry if I hurt you, Iggy. You didn't hurt nobody. Anybody? Huh? Oh, I see. You think you're better than me, do you? When it came to complete strangers, <laughs> Iggy had trouble cobbling together an insult. <laughs> You big hated, uh, scarfy necked, uh, furball. <laughs> mm hmm. Okay, let's lower the temperature a bit here. Interesting choice of words. I mean, let's all just calm down. Who are you? Friends? An observer? A hitchhiker on the infinite expanse of possibilities. Great. How about a name? Mm. If you must call me something, you can call me Nat. Iggy huffed with gratification. How about you make like a gnat and buzz off? <laughs> Nat began Very well. to turn away indifferently. No, wait! Do you live here? You might say that. Hmm. So you know where we are? You might also say that. Hmm. Look, pal, we just want to find a safe way out of here. You gonna help us or what? Before knowing how to leave, one must know where they are. Uh, all right, that does it. Luca, I don't know about you, but I'm getting out of here, one way or another. Iggy turned sharply and began to stomp off. <laughs> Enough with the reels. Iggy, wait up. Realizing he'd worn their patience then, Nat relented. Very well, I suppose this isn't the time for metaphors. I'll show you how to get back Luca home. Luca and Iggy turned around with hope in their eyes. Come here. Nat took a deep breath in. Close your eyes. Nat exhaled slowly, huh. then snapped his fingers. What is happening? Okay, open For them. For a brief moment, Luca and Iggy let themselves believe that some great magic was about to unfold, until they opened their eyes and <laughs> found themselves in the exact same place. Of course. Cold and disheartened. This is your home. This is Beacon Pines. Look, Nat, we don't know how we got here. Maybe we stumbled through some time travel gate in Weep, the, in Weep Woods? Or we teleported to some alternative universe? Or this is all just some cruel experiment by Kerr and his goons? But this is not our home. You're inching closer to the truth. Alas, the reality is much less faithful. Hmm, just give it to us straight. So be it. As I said, this is Beacon Pines. The original, true Beacon Pines. Ah, uh, so the one we're living in is just a joke? You both grew up here. By the time you called your home for the past several years, it is a replica. A remarkable achievement of engineering, to be fair. But a replica nonetheless? That's impossible. It's too much work. You need the whole town to replicate a whole town. Indeed, to pull off such a feat would require immense labor power. That which could be moved, would be moved. That which could not require precise duplicate. Hmm. Well, we would have noticed. Someone would have noticed. You think so? Unless the auditing was impeccable? A mind mumbling attention to detail. As for the uh, innumerable trivialities which complete the uh, tapestry, well, you can leave that to the miraculous things we call a brain. It has a real aversion of a discontinuity, a revulsion even. The brain has a wonderful way of smoothing out the rough edges, keeping us Luca sane. Luca and Iggy looked around hmm. uncomfortably. So you're saying that someone made an entire town and moved all of us and no one noticed? Precisely. But why? Well, why is the one question that can never be answered with the certainty? The best one can do is to just uncover. Nat narrowed his eyes, hmm. furrowed his brow, and uttered. The source. Would you say the source like that? Why indeed? Luca began to laugh uncomfortably. Hmm. <laughs> it's ridiculous. There's no way he they could. He looked down at his feet. His eyes started back and forth in contemplation. With a sudden pain, a thought struck him. 
if this really is home. He sprinted off into the pale distance. As Iggy turned to follow, Nat called out. Iggy, it's not too late to turn back. Simply head west through the weep woods. What? Did my... Chapter Did my character six. just went back home, I guess? The source. The Nat source. expressed his sympathy with a shrug and sauntered off as unassumingly as he'd arrived. He'd given Luca and Iggy what they needed and nothing more. As Luca sprinted across the snow, the events of the past few days became clearer, pieces to a larger puzzle. Rollo said he was underground somewhere, captured. Mr. Kerr tried to cover it up with lies. The clipboards were hell-bent on capturing Iggy. It all seemed to point to perennial harvest. But right now, there was one thing that Luca needed to know. Oh, maybe we gotta unlock that uh, manhole. Hmm, is that what Luca I'm going for? stopped dead in his tracks. The tree was gone, uprooted and moved, leaving a raw gash in the earth. He dropped to his knees and dug wildly at the cold snow. Oh, is he looking for his house? His numb hands hit uh, something no, never hard. mind. He's the looking headstone. for the tombstone, yes, of his father. Dry whisper or mother? Lucas lips. You here? All this time, I thought I was just visiting you, but you've been here alone in the snow. Dad, I'm so sorry. They ruined your favorite spot in the world. Our favorite spot in the world. Dad, what there do I do? No reply. Just snow covered silence. Oh, man. Why did you give me the slip like that? What if I couldn't find you, you jerk? Iggy finally <laughs> noticed the tears welling in Luca's eyes and the snow covered grave. Oh. Iggy, they. They stole his tree, Iggy. Suddenly, Yikes. they heard the crunch of approaching footsteps in the oh, snow. Oh, God. Um. We gotta hide. Oh, is this fella? Or these fellas? 259k. Fall of distance still good. Hmm. Dude, did you hear me? I said 259. Sorry, uh, you ever think about what we did here? We saved the whole town of people. Well, it doesn't feel like it sometimes. What about everything we left behind? That's the grave of someone with a family. The people who love them will never know the truth. The truth is overrated. He bent down to scoop up a snowball and lobbed it playfully. <laughs> hey! Hmm, don't be such a downer, dude. We took this job to change the world. Yeah, come on. It's almost lunchtime. <laughs> the way he's just walking. What the heck? <laughs> Weirdo. That was funny. Hmm. Here I thought I was a jerk. These dinguses are out of here, literally dancing on Lucas graves. Stuttered through heaving sobs. Hmm. I thought I was visiting him. I thought he was with me. Not gonna lie, that's a bad break. Here's some Iggy advice. Luca a solid smack on the back of his head. <laughs> hey, how's any of this helping? What? Sitting here in the snow, crying like some uh, pushover. Who you helping? Iggy, look what they did. They lied to everyone. Blah, blah, blah. Look at Van Horn, you're a lot of things, but you ain't no pushover. What did I tell you before? When some jerk comes at you, acting like a horse ass, I should stand up for myself? Hell yeah. Carrying his merry little band of uh, clipboards pulled off his uh, switcheroo for a reason, right? Nat mentioned something about a source. Luca wiped his eyes with a sleeve. Hmm. Whatever's at the source must be awfully valuable to the perennial harvest. Well, sure would be a shame if something unfortunate were to happen to their precious source, wouldn't it? Well, what do you have in mind? If it's small enough to steal, we snatch it. If it's too big to snatch, we smash it. Hmm. And what if it's too big to smash? Iggy flashed a mischievous smile and cracked his knuckles. <laughs> I'm always up for a challenge. All right, I'm gonna make this right, Dad. I promise. Let's do this. All right, look at that. We gotta locate the source next. Man, this game has uh gotten very, very weird. It can get awfully cold out there in those woods, Luca. Probably best you to stay put and conserve your energy. Helps on the way. Where's Rollo? Where's my mom? Did you kill her? Oh, heavens no. 
Do I seem like a killer Iggy to you? And Luca shared a skeptical look. <laughs> well, do I? Ah, oh, shucks. Now that hurts my feelings. Screw that guy. I have a feeling we gotta get inside here somehow, maybe, but, um... Not sure how we're gonna do this, though. Alright, let's keep her going. Wait a minute. If this is the original town, then that means... Iggy darted behind a large pine and began digging furiously. He emerged huh. holding a shoebox with a crude skull painted on its lid. I'm guessing he hid that a long time ago? What's that? Long story. So a few years back, I uh came into possession of some premium grade fireworks. Not the wimpy firecracker stuff they give kids. The good stuff. So what did you bury under a tree? That's the long part of the story. You and Rollo were doing chores at Rollo's chicken coop. And you guys pissed me off for some reason Luca or another. Luca rolled his eyes with realization. <laughs> no, you didn't. And he stifled a chuckle. <laughs> yep, I just wanted to give you guys a little scare. But like I said, these were some primal fireworks. So I might have underestimated things. You blew up the chicken coop? I prefer to think of it as uh, incendiary redecoration. <laughs> Sorry, but you shouldn't see in the looks of your faces. Rollo got grounded for months, which is why I need to stash the evidence and lay low. So I buried them under the tree. But when I came back for them later, they were gone. Hmm. I figured some grown-ups found them and tossed Icky them. He triumphantly raised the shoebox. <laughs> Turns out it wasn't the fireworks that got moved. It was us. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right, we got ourselves some fireworks then. Uh, are we supposed to? Do you think this is a game? Newsflash, boyo. You're not a hero. You're a little brat who is in a way over his head. A hero is just someone who refused to give up. Comics these days are rotting children's brains. Everyone thinks they're a spaceman hero. I was always partial to Hank Atomic myself. Is that so? Do you really think you have a chance of, against us? You have no idea how powerful we are. Prepare for blast off, loser. <laughs> so are we just supposed to blast off his entire- Oh, what the? Are we supposed to throw the fireworks in here, I wonder? Luca and Iggy inched up to the edge of the hole with bewilderment in their eyes. Arctic air breathed out of the cavern in heaving gusts. Echo! <laughs> oh my god, look at that echo. Whoa. I can see why they wanted to move us all of the town now. Hmm. But why would they dig a giant hole? I think... This is it. I think this is it. Yeah, this is probably the source. This is the source? Hmm. It's a dang hole. How do we smash a hole? Oh no! Are you kidding me? Ah, it's much more than that, my annoying little friends. Kerr. Where's Rallo? I wasn't lying before. He's safe. Well, safer than you two, at least. Trapped, it's cold. You just had to drag me all this way out here, didn't Mr. you? Mr. Kerr gazed down the abyss in contemplation. Hmm, it really is something, isn't it? What did you do to our town? What is all this? Well, that's a doozy of a question. This is the source where they collect the unrefined, um... Kerr scratched the back of his head. Honestly, boy, I don't understand it of this well enough to explain it. Fact of the matter is, I'm not paid to know. What do you mean you don't know? Ain't you in charge? Oh, heavens no. My role is to merely flash a winning small and uh, manage various complications. Complications like us? You are a His smart boy. His face contorted into a saccharine grin. Hmm. It really is nothing personal. Some people are destined to strive for a greatness, and others are simply obstacles along the way. Seems like you were destined to be a creepy lackey. <laughs> the point is that we all play our parts in life. Mine just happened to be a lead in the role of a lifetime. And you just happen to be Rextras, ready for your curtain call. Hmm, well, we aren't giving up without a fight. Your smile is not going to be so winning after we're done with you. Now boys, there's no need for a little drama. It makes even a professional such as myself embarrassed for you. Let's change the mood Curse a bit. snapped his fingers. Scene change. Oh god, everybody's showing up. Nope. What are we gonna do? Are we just gonna jump in the hole, I wonder? There. That's better. Deal with them. 
Iggy turned to Luca with a sly glance. Why are you smirking? Because I have a box full of fireworks and you don't. Iggy waved the box <laughs> into the air, threatening to drop it down the hole. Stop! Let's not do something regrettable. Joke's on you. Regret is one of your specialties. Out of curiosity, what would happen if I threw these in your precious hole? Nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> You're a terrible liar. Well, you'll have to know. I'm an exceptional liar. That's far Iggy enough. plucked a single bottle rocket from the box and held it up with reverence. <laughs> Stop, you fool! Call off your goons. After a long pause, <laughs> Mr. Kerr flung up his hand with frustration. Very well. You all can head back to the night. It's been a long day. I'll handle these two from here. Mr. Oh god, Iggy, please do that. Please do that. Air. I wanted to actually throw those uh, fireworks inside. It's just us now, Iggy. You can put that down. What? Like With this? A nonchalant flick, Iggy <laughs> tossed the firework into the hole. Ah, there we go. Oh god. I wonder what that will do. Oh! <laughs> Whoa. With the girl, leapt at Iggy, crashing through Luca. Oh my god. Iggy tried oh, to twist what away. What the? Are you kidding but in me? The struggle, they both tumbled over the side. Luca dove forward, bracing Iggy's hand just before it slipped. Oh no. I His think I'm going to lose it. Precarious by the cold, wet snow. He could see no. Kerr further down, clinging to Iggy's coat. You reckless child. What have you done? <laughs> Luca, listen to me. Hold on tight and use the walkie-talkie to call them back. How... What channel do I use? It doesn't make a damn difference. They're always listening. If you do that, the clipper will just hold us up and snag us both. The only way you get out of this is if Kerr is out of the picture. Just let me go and save yourself, Luca. If he lets go, we both die. Well, I don't want to die, but seeing the look on your face almost makes it worth it. <laughs> Mr. Kerr, you've had a long life. Why don't you just actually do something selfless and just let go? Mr. Kerr gasped <laughs> with insult. Ah, uh, love it. Long life? I'll have you know, I can still play 25. You have heard me sing the part of uh, Phileas with Young. With a wild look in his eye, <laughs> Mr. Kerr began to hum a proud melody. What? Is he seriously singing right now? <laughs> Whoa, can you believe this guy? Oh, am I just supposed to hum as well? Luca's hmm. hand began to cramp. His voice began to crack. Kerr, just let go. No can do. If you want to save your friend, you have to save me too. Luca, look at me. It's okay. Luca felt Iggy loosen his grasp. Oh, God. You aren't going to kill your friend like that, are Every you? Every muscle in Luca's body burned. Oh, man. I'm not his friend. Yes, you are. Nah, I'm just a no good bully. Like you, Kerr. Luca Iggy, no! His hand slipping. And I told you what you need to do with bullies. I can't. It's your only way out of this mess. Two birds with one stone. It makes sense for all of us to fall together. Wackadoos travel in packs. Calm settled over Iggy's face. Wow. Luca, let me Iggy's do this. Iggy's voice was colder than the bitter air billowing from the chasm. Let me do this. Let me do the right thing for once. Oh man, he is gonna let go. But of course, this is gonna be where I'm gonna have to also choose again. So Luca had no choice but to. Oh. Are you kidding me? Accept Iggy's Luca request. Luca had no choice but to accept Iggy's request. I wanted to also refuse, but I think I wanna accept. With a quiet blink, Luca watched a teardrop sail down into the howling void. As his fingers slowly gave up, he met eyes with Iggy. Good. Wow, seriously? Oh. The two silhouettes were swallowed by darkness. What? I have a feeling the choice was not a good one, though. <laughs> Fireworks are jumping out of the hole. Are you kidding me? What the heck? What is even happening? 
Hell of a goodbye, Guy. Luca, you should really step back. What? Quickly. Oh, is he gonna blow? Whoa. Jeez. Curious. Hmm. But of course, those fireworks of Iggy must have been just the right amount of energy. We should get out of here before Perennial Harvest arrives. Not until you tell me what just happened. Your friend's sacrifice just saved this town. For a little while, anyway. How? Well, Tempest Liquid Mine is a peculiar substance. It can change the relationship between matter and time itself. But doing so requires unfathomable energy. In a closed system, that energy can only come from its surroundings. A useful side product of this uh, property being, by adding precisely the correct amount of energy to it, one can create a, a cryptogenic cascade. So the gut makes things cold and the fireworks made the whole freeze out? Hmm, that's one way of putting it, yeah. As dumb luck would have it, the fireworks weren't strong enough to generate a runaway reaction. I shudder to think what would have happened in that we case. We have some idea what that would look like. <laughs> It will take them a good while to safely break through and uh, access the source again. If you know all this stuff, why haven't you been helping? Well, I have been, in my way. Each one of us had our roles to play. Iggy's role, it turns out, was to buy his precious time. Mine has been to observe and wait. Wait for what? You? Me? Why? What's my role? A fierce twinkle flashed in Nat's eyes. Well, look at Van Horn. You are going to save the world. What? With a chuckle, man, this Nat game is becoming and stranger and stranger. Dumbfounded, Luca followed behind him, trudging through the snow. Every step taking him further away from everyone and everything he knew, and closer to destiny. To be continued in Beacon Pines, Pines Harder. <laughs> Beacon Pines, Pines Harder. Is that gonna be Pine Beacon Pines too? Revenge served cold. What? Second time's a charm? <laughs> Wait. Awesome. That's it? This ends with a crummy cliffhanger just when it was getting good? I was even starting to like Iggy. No way. I refuse to be associated with some never ending parade of sequels. Let's go back and find something more definitive. <laughs> All right, so apparently we got to go with Refuse. Apparently we cannot accept losing Iggy. And you know what? I kind of like this ending better. So let's just go with this option then. And go with Refuse. Luca had no choice but to refuse Iggy's request. He tightened his grip and reached for the walkie-talkie in his pocket. A wild delight crept onto Mr. Kerr's face. That's a good lad. Now, radio for help. Iggy begged Luca with his eyes one last time, but Luca pressed the button and called out. We... we need help! Mr. Kerr is in danger! It wasn't long before they were once again surrounded by clipboards. Mr. Kerr sighed with relieved frustration. There you are! You really are a worthless lot, aren't you? <laughs> mirror, now! A clipboard dutifully produced an ornate ivory hand mirror, and Mr. Kerr began preening his tussled hair. Ah, that's better. Mr. Van Horn, I applaud your sharp thinking under duress. I'll put in a good word for you with the founder. Take them away. A swarm of hands overpowered Luca. The last thing he saw before a cloth bag was pulled over his head was the defeated look on Iggy's face. Oh man. The end. Wait, what? The mm, end again? <laughs> I think this so was one of those times where doing the right thing was mm. the wrong thing. Yeah. Dang it. All right, so apparently uh, I cannot go with any of those options, which means the only place we can actually go back to is going to be right here. All right, well, we got to choose what type of a cop we got to be. But you know what, guys? I think it's going to be where we're going to have to end up this episode of Beacon Pines, and we'll come back in the next one. Uh, we're going to try to uh, do a little bit of interrogation here and choose something a little bit different because previously we actually messed it up. So I uh, hope we're going to fix it up. But that being said, guys, thank you all very much for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you soon in another episode of Beacon Pines. Bye, everybody.